Hi there, I'm Daniel from Buy the Brush Miniatures and today I'll walk you through the process of making a custom named character for your army. The first thing you'll need to think about with your character is their model. If you're experienced and confident at kit bashing, I would highly recommend that you kit bash the character's model. We've made a whole video on kit bashing if you think you need some guidance through the process of learning it. But if you do not wish to kit bash, kit bash your character for this reason or that reason, I would recommend using a modular kit such as the commander kit if you're making a Space Marines character for example. Just find something like that that can be flexible for what you want to create. So the primary aspect of the character itself is the lore. Now if you already have an idea in mind for your character's lore before you've made the model, and you are kit bashing it, I would recommend you might want to add something in that is related to the character's law, such as a weapon or a piece of armour, just to make the character stand out a bit more and give them reasoning why you've made them look the way it is. Or if in your conversion you've added something that you just think looks cool, uh, then later down the line you might think like I have a cool idea for some lore that could add reasoning to why the character actually has that piece on the model. So now talking about the character's lore on a wider scope, they'll need some reason that they're special. They don't need to be an incredibly high rank or, or they could just be someone that's done one special thing or it could just be someone that for example, they could have been a unique case of something in the army. For example, I have a Sisters of Battle model that I got from a painting competition at my local games workshop, but I don't have a Sisters of Battle army, so I thought of a unique way to integrate her into my Tau army. Now I don't bother using her in games because I don't have a purpose for her, but I just thought it would be cool to have a model with something in the law rather than just sitting there for no reason and that's probably what you the only real case that would occur if your character isn't a very high rank that it's a model that you've been given for free or something alternatively you could for example if you on if you only do uh, either 40k or age of sigma and you get a free model somehow of the of the game that you don't play you could somehow do some converting to make it fit the, the game that you do play and then integrate it into one of your armies. So now you might be thinking, how do I actually go about making this story from, for my character? Now, the, it doesn't need to be incredibly in-depth or it can be highly extensive. It's completely up to you and your character's lore will grow over time as you get better at actually forging the lore as I mentioned in my How to Create Custom Subfactions video. So the first thing you'll want to start with for your character is some sort of key aspect, perhaps a key motive, weapon or personality, personality trait. These will dictate most aspects of the character, for example their gear that I mentioned earlier. Now if you've come up with something special for a weapon or a piece of armour or just some form of artefact that they have, I would recommend finding a relic in the in-game rules that you can put on the character that suits what that is actually supposed to be and supposed to do. Or if it's just a cool weapon, you can either just not give it a relic or you can just do something that you think would be useful in your army. In addition to relics, the warlord trait that you assign to this character should they ever be your warlord in a game should also reflect these traits that you've given onto them if they're, if they're a very aggressive character that likes getting into things and killing the opponent, then you won't want to give them an aura buff, but you'll want to give them something that boosts their damage perhaps, or something that disbenefits the enemies. So now that we've established the key character traits for your character, then we'll, prob we'll, we'll definitely need to create an origin for the character. Why are they in the position that they are now? This will most likely link to their motive. Were they involved in any big battle that was perhaps a tragedy for them? Or did they just grind, grind their way up through the ranks of their army and then earn their way to the top? There's a variety of things you can do to elevate what your character is 
and to make them more of a person rather than just a model that you use on the tabletop. Finally, for the law, if your custom sub-faction that your character is in has been involved in any major events, which they likely have been, then, such as a large-scale battle, you might want to choose whether your character was involved or not, and how significant their involvement was. Were they a very key turning point in the, in the war that either made their sub-faction lose because of a mistake they made, or because of a heroic sacrifice that they may have made? Did they win the war, and were they renowned as a hero after the event? Maybe that could be their origin. There's a lot of things you could do, and I would recommend not keeping it too, the, too uniform between characters if you're making a few. But if this is your first one, I would recommend probably keeping all of this nice and simple. You don't want to make it a very complex law that'll just be a bit strange in its environment. You might want to save something like that for a later character when you are more experienced at making the lore of your characters. But once you've done all that, you'll have a very well-constructed character with lore and gameplay to match. As I said before, your character's lore will expand, and perhaps if your sub-faction's lore expands, their lore might expand with it, and vice versa. So with that all being said, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you would like to support us elsewhere, there's links below to our Patreon, and if you would like to talk to other hobby doers like me and you, then you can go join our Discord server, and if you'd like to see some of our own work, then you can go visit our Instagram. But without that all being said, I'll see you next time.